Welcome to Inside Independent Publishing. My name is Christopher Locke. I am the host, and I'm also the Director of Membership and Member Services. And by the way, yes, that is a new title for me, and I'm very excited. I will be serving the IBPM membership in an all new way, so uh, watch out for that. Okay, let's start the podcast. So I'm an author publisher, and I know firsthand how much the author part of me just wants to write books. I don't wanna have to think about marketing or any of that other stuff, but if a book's gonna be successful, it is imperative that authors take an active role in marketing their books. So, since a lot of authors feel uncomfortable with this, uh, it's actually really helpful for independent publishers to help guide their authors during this process. And today, we have founder of independent publisher Motina Books, Diane Windsor, who works closely with her authors as partners when it comes to marketing. Hello, Diane. How are you? Hi, Christopher. I'm great. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. It's very nice to have you. Okay, so some authors think that like the majority of marketing should or does fall on publishers. So I wanted to give kind of like reasonable expectations. Um, you're a publisher, so from your perspective, uh, and this is kind of like a broad overview, and we'll get into specifics in a second. But sure. like, what part and like the marketing of the book do you think the publisher should play versus like the author? Well, you just mentioned something that I think really kind of hits a nail on the head. It's about guidance. Um, I, I really think that the readers want to engage more with the author than with the publisher, right? Because, you know, they, they love that personal communication. If you're going to interact a little bit with so on social media with your readers, they just love that. But as a publisher, I feel that an author doesn't always know exactly the best way to go about marketing their books. And that's where I come in. I really try to do a good job with guiding them and helping to organize their marketing efforts for their book. Uh, one thing I want to ask about is in terms of the marketing, is this something that's like in the author contract? Like, do you all lay out in advance, like, here's what I'm going to do, you're going to do, or is it, it's not kind of like written in stone like that? No, it's not. It's not. Actually, in my contract, I do say that I will help market the book to the best of my ability because nobody can really guarantee how many books will be sold or, you know, which marketing efforts are going to pay off and which aren't. And I really believe that there is not one magic pill to marketing success or to selling a lot of books. What works for one book may not work very well for another book, depending on the genre or the audience or the book itself. And the bottom line kind of is that authors need to do many, many different things when it comes to marketing their book and, and helping to sell their books. Like, let's say like media opportunities. So is that something like the publisher does or the, the author or both? Like, how, do, how does that work? So this kind of reminds me of a previous episode that I listened to of your podcast where I, I don't remember the woman's name, but I think she was a publicist. And she said, a publisher is not the same as a publicist. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, a publicist is the person with the relationships with the, the media contacts. Now that said, I am more than happy to reach out to local media, whether it's your local NPR station or local TV news or other local um, uh, in the radio or anything else in, in, the, um, in the author's general area, like where they live. Because I do kind of think that a publisher might have a little more I don't know, influence than the author reaching out to them. So I'll put together a one sheet for the author, right? That tells all about the, the book and, and the author bio and how many pages the book is in the ISBN and all of that good stuff. I put that together and I offer giveaways. Maybe it's like, Hey, you know, if you interview my author, we'll be happy to provide some giveaways of the book the audiobook, the ebook to your listeners. I think that that's a great way because to reach out to media because you don't want to just say what can you do for me. You mm -hmm. want to say what what can I do for you and for your listeners, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great advice. That's it's about great. the relationships. And I did want to ask you then about social media. So it seems like from what you said that the author, in terms of having like a social media following. Uh, it's kind of more on them because it, it works better. Like just in terms of garnering an audience, getting book sales, uh, they might respond better to the author in terms of social media. So 
Um, it does. Yeah. So, like, when you're looking for authors, uh, do you kind of look for people who have social media followings, or is that something when you, you know, have a new author sign, do you say, "Hey, here's the first thing you might want to start doing: get a following." Sure. I don't, I don't look for that because I think that um, the reason that I got into publishing in the first place was to be able to publish books by people who don't already have a big following because it's my understanding that that's what the big publishers um, are looking for. It's like they're not even going to talk to somebody unless they have 10 or 20,000 followers on Instagram, right? And most independent authors or self-published authors, new authors, they don't have that yet. So I want to give them the chance to publish their book, to get their book out there without having that following already and help them build that following while we're going through this process together. And I do love your concept of guiding authors. So I wanted to then ask, um, in terms of meetings, so how does that work? Do you like meet with them before the book's published, after the book's published? Like how often do you meet with them to specifically talk about like how they're you or they can market their book? Well, I mean, meeting before the book is published, of course, because I go through all of that as well. We do the, the editing together and the, you know, then I do the formatting for paperback and ebook and hardback. Um, some of my authors are recording their own audio books, which I think is great. I think audio is going to be, you know, very, maybe not profitable, but very helpful. And just in the whole publishing process, I think it's a great media to offer to your readers. We meet a lot towards as we getting closer to launch date, because I like to provide enough time. So we have quite a big window between like signing the contract and then to when the book is actually going to be launched, because you need that time, right? You need time to, to do the editing and the formatting and all that stuff. And then to provide advanced reader copies to their support team. Those people need time to read the book and then to provide feedback and reviews and all that good stuff. But as we're about two months away from launch date, two to three months, that's when I meet with my authors weekly so that we can both be very, um, so, so that we're meeting expectations. We're setting our expectations and we're meeting them. They knew they know what they need to do, and I know what I need to do. And then in those meetings, your uh, do you have like we're going to talk about your book planner, um, by the way. But I just wanted to see if when you're in those meetings, do you have specific things, kind of like here's A, B, C, D of like what I recommend doing now before the book's published. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Are, so, uh, well, let's talk about some of those now then. So uh, when you're in that meeting, what are some of those things that you say, A, B, C, D, let's do it. <laughs> sure. So early on, I tell my authors to start building their advanced reader team. And I can also refer to this as your support team, because I don't think it's only important to have this team supporting you for the launch. They should always be supporting you. And I have seen some publishers and marketing consultants recommend that you have like a hundred or more people on your advanced reader team. Wow. To me, honestly, I think that's a bit much. I think it's hard to get that many people, especially really dedicated people who are going to really help you out. I think 20 to 30 is a great number to shoot for. And those are the people who will, they will read an advanced copy of your book They'll help you with reviews. They'll share all kinds of great stuff on social media and providing images for them to share. That's something that I do. I put these, in, these cool social media images together. If the author wants to do some, that's great, but I'm happy to do that. We'll create like a little book trailer or some little animated images. Those are always fun, but that's the kind of stuff that we ask our advanced team to, to do. Sometimes pe authors especially are worried, oh, but those are my core readers. I'll lose out on sales. Those are the ones I know will buy the book. So what do you say to that concept? Just because we give them a free ebook as an advanced copy, that doesn't mean that they're not going to buy the hard copy or the paperback too, right? And then word of mouth is still a really great marketing tool. And so if your core team, your core readers are sharing information about your book to their followers and their friends, that's only that's only a win-win for both of you. And I, I find that a lot of people, especially if they're really um, 
your fans and your readers, they love helping authors. They think it's really cool. They just get a kick out of it. So don't be afraid to ask people to help you. Okay. So what's some of them, the other things you mentioned in that, that first meeting before a book's published that you're like, let's do this now, uh, or actually you should do this now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> I also like um, to have authors start thinking about who could possibly provide a blurb or a review that would be good on the cover of the book or the inside of the book, not necessarily just like an Amazon review or something, but something that can actually go on the book. So maybe by um, an established author that they know. I'm happy to help out with that as well. I will reach out to these people too for blurbs, but it really depends on who has a relationship in that situation. I have actually reached out to previous Ben Franklin Award winners. Oh, the IBPA the, Benjamin Franklin Awards is yeah. the awards for the IBPA. Uh, yeah, very cool. And I have reached out to silver and gold winners in that genre before, and people have not said no. It's like they're happy to help other IBPA members and other independent authors in that That's regard. That's part of the community of IBPA. I love that you do that. That's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, thank you. So, like I said, there isn't one magic pill, and I love thinking out of the box ideas. I think that's really a, a great way. Like, I'm going to be publishing a picture book next year, and picture books would be great in schools, you know? And I think school visits are a great, great way to, to market your book, offer to, to um, show up either in person if possible, if it's a local school, or maybe if it's not local, you can do a Skype visit or, um, or a Zoom visit. I know that there are other successful IBPA members who have done that. And I think that's a great way to, to think outside of the box when it comes to marketing. The book is now published. So let's say like the launch event, same thing. Is that something that the publisher should just handle or do the do you work with your authors or the author handles that like who who handles the the big launch event we definitely have a launch plan launch events are you know they're kind of if you right now if you're talking about like a launch party or something you know not many people are not a lot of people are are doing things in person yet i think but i've also heard there there are some people that i follow um you know in the in the indie publishing industry and i've heard that the party shouldn't really be a big way to sell books, but more of a celebration that you have accomplished this and gotten to this milestone. Hmm. So it, it's fun to have a party, but do it more for yourself to celebrate that you've done it. But it, it's interesting that you mentioned that because so many people, so many authors and independent publishers spend a lot of time working their way up to the launch, right? We have to do this and this and this and this and this. And then what do you do after the launch? There's still so much that can be done after the launch. And you might want to take a step back and relax and enjoy the moment, but don't lose too much momentum. That's when you can start approaching schools and approaching book clubs and approaching, you know, podcasts and keep approaching media. There's um, one PR firm that I have worked with there in Texas, and they love the idea of timely tie-ins. So if you've got like a national day calendar, right? There's like a holiday for every day in the year these days, right? Like National Jelly Donut Day or something. If you've got a book that ties into one of these national holidays, you can really capitalize on, on those particular days. The author forever technically might be helping you know to market that book but like how, how does that work with the publisher like how long do you keep kind of helping to push uh, six months a year and at some point is it like all right well, well we did it <laughs> and now you're on to other books right i know i know well honestly i'm always working on multiple books with multiple authors and um i i love when the authors will help each other. And I've got a, a great little community. You know, I don't have a ton of authors, but the ones that I do right now, they really like to help each other and promote each other's books. I always kind of want to be involved. I might not be pushing this one book as hard as I am a newer book that is about to be released, but I'm always thinking, oh, this, this date is coming up and this, uh, 
you know, relates to this book that we published six months ago. So let's reach out to the author. Maybe we can do a promotion, you know, let's reduce the price, especially for an ebook. That's easy to do down to 99 cents and run it with this promotion that applies to this particular day. And, and also sometimes maybe bundles. I know that uh, publishers will bundle some of their books all together and then sure. do a reduced rate. Um, so that, that may be something. That's too, a right? great idea. That's one of those out of the box ideas. Look at me thinking outside the box. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, okay, so you, I want to talk about your book marketing planner. So okay. you, people can go to your website, tell them a little bit. They can download it for free, right? That's right. That's right. So at my website, motinabooks.com, it's M-O-T-I-N-A books, I offer a free book marketing planner because like we said, I mean, you mentioned it right off the bat, Christopher, that authors want to write. They don't want to have to market as much as they just want to really just write and tell their story. And I get that. And you get bombarded with so much information about the best ways to do marketing. And it's hard to keep it all in one place. So that's really what the book marketing planner is meant to do, is meant to keep all of your book marketing efforts in one place so you're organized. And so you can go to my website and download it for free. Um, and here's a, I, it's also on Amazon and I've got it Print it out. You know, you can buy it as a paperback if you want to. If you don't want to print it out yourself, I like, I like having a printout so you can just write it all down. And it just has all of the efforts. On the first page, it talks about your goals and objectives for your book. It's like, sure, everybody wants to sell thousands of books, but let's take a step back and think realistically. What do you, what do you really want to do with your book? There's also a page for who is your target audience? Well, everybody, everybody's going to love my book. It's like, okay, but really, who are you writing this book for? Is it for, you know, young adults, for children, for the parents of children? Just, you know, define your audience because that will help you sell your books. Yeah, absolutely. And I also saw email marketing as something that you really, like in the planner, it's something you really push and you think it's a really right. helpful thing. Well, so. there is there's a section on email marketing because like I said earlier, just doing one thing, only social media or only your newsletter or you know, only de depending on your support team isn't going to cut it. You have to do all the things. So I still believe that an author really should have a newsletter. And you don't have to send it out like four times a week or something, but once a month is great to let your audience know what you're doing and what uh, books are coming out. I think readers even like to know what's going on with authors in their personal lives. I think that helps them kind of relate to the authors and makes them feel like they're friends a little bit. So yes, I do have a section in the planner that's about marketing and creating lead magnets delivering lead magnets and building your email list and even like planning your newsletters. What are you going to cover in each one over several months just to like really organize your, your email campaign? Yeah. And I wanted to ask you about lead magnets. So can you define that for people who don't know what that means? So that a lead magnet is something that you are giving a person for free to encourage them to sign up for your newsletter. For example, my book marketing planner is a free download, but I do ask that people who download it sign up for my newsletter. So that would be a lead magnet. Um, and that's, that's what I use as a publisher. But for a, an author, like say you're a fiction author and you want to provide a lead magnet to a new subscriber, that could be maybe a backstory or a story about a character that nobody has read anywhere else. It's not available in any of your books or like a, a tiny novella that isn't available. Um, I think, like I said, I think audio is very cool. Maybe you read a chapter of your book and you provide that as a lead magnet to a new subscriber. Um, there's, you can get really creative with this kind of thing. And there are a lot of examples in the planner also, if you want to brainstorm about, about lead magnets. Yeah. And for then the email marketing, is, do you recommend people use some type of like service, like marketing? Uh, sure. There's a lot of them out there. I think MailChimp is pretty 
um, popular right now. I think it's like, because it's free up to 2000 subscribers, but there are others also um, that I am not super familiar with. Constant Contact used to be the big one quite oh, a few years ago. Yeah, they actually have an IBPA um, member benefit. Yeah. Constant Contact does. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, so okay. well, look, you're about to save some money. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so there you go. Uh huh. <laughs> Beautiful, okay. I remember I used to use them years ago and they were very intuitive and e you know easy to use and very powerful also. So cool, that's good to know. I didn't even realize that. So it's really best to, to use a service because that way you, you make sure that people are subscribing legally, right? They're opting in. You're not just putting them on your list or something. So you want to make sure, and they, they can unsubscribe. You want to make sure that that, that all happens the right way. Yeah. That, Cause I did want to, you mentioned about how often to send the email and I do think uh, it's difficult to figure out. You don't want to annoy them with too many, but if you only send one a year, you also run into them forgetting you even exist. Exactly. So yeah. So you think once a month is like uh, maybe the sweet spot. Once or twice, even. Yeah, I think so. Because like you said, you don't want people to forget you. I guess it also kind of depends on, you know, how much you're doing, how many um, books you're releasing. I've got some authors who are very prolific and I, they've, they're going to have like six books coming out in the next 12 to 18 months. So that's that's pretty good. Yeah, um, I would say you, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an author and that, that okay, all right, good, know, good right? for them. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Good for them. It's exciting. So, um, yeah, it's it kind of depends on what you're doing, but yeah, I don't think you want to go less frequently than once a month because, like you said, then your readers might kind of forget that you're around. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you, as a publisher, have one list. The author has another list, and so you all are kind of doing, you know, simultaneously to your list. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. So, of course, I'm sending out information to my own list about new books that are being released by my authors, and they are managing their own list. Yeah. Okay. So, we've talked about a lot of things that work really well. So, I, I wanted to ask, is there anything in terms of marketing that sometimes you kind of tell your publisher, uh, your authors, uh, hey, maybe this, maybe don't do that? Or is it kind of book by book? There is a lot of book by book because, like I said, I love these creative marketing ideas. Um, somebody did suggest, can we, you know, ship the books together as a um, as kind of a bundle? I'm like, we can do that, but it does take a lot more time, and then we have to worry about the f fulfillment, right? It's not going to be. Amazon or Bookshop or somebody fulfilling the order. So if you want to do that, that's great. I also, I'm a, I'm a fan of book signings. I'm a fan of getting in front of people, even though you may or may not sell a lot of books at a book signing event. It also doesn't only have to be at a bookstore. It can be at, I mean, we've got a local winery in the town that I live and they love that. They love holding those kind of events. I've got a little gift shop and they love that too. So it, those are really fun events. Yeah, that's great. I think that um, uh, it, it's like, I know for me personally, like when I meet, go to an event and do something in person that I end up selling more books because I think people like connecting with the like author connecting. and it makes them feel like they are then connected with this book. They're like, oh, I met that person. I, I like them. That's um, right. So uh, I, I have much more luck. So I, I do highly recommend them. And that's one of the difficult things right now is so many of these in-person events are canceled and um, those are so effective. Um, have you, by the way, in your authors, have you all tried doing of these like online, like Zoom uh, talks or readings or anything like that? Not yet, but I am a fan of um, author visits to book clubs via Zoom and also possible school visits, like we mentioned, via Zoom. And that's something that can take place. It doesn't matter if it's COVID or not, right? Because that gives an author the ability to, to travel, basically, which is really nice. Absolutely. Yeah, I definitely am. Um, and, and again, it's a great way to connect with those readers and have them understand you as a person. Um, and it, it really does help. Um, so I also want to ask, like, is there anything like that we've talked about with the book marketing that, that maybe that we missed, we haven't talked about yet that you're like, hey, this is a great way to help authors uh, set them up for success for book marketing? There are three things. When somebody asked me, what are the three most important things that you would tell an author about book marketing? 
Number one, when it comes to social media, don't try to master everything. Pick two platforms that you feel comfortable with and focus on those. You don't have to be an expert on Facebook and Twitter and Clubhouse and Instagram and TikTok because there's always going to be a new social media platform, right? So pick the two that you feel most comfortable with. The number two is I really, really think that having a good, strong support team or advanced reader team is one of the most important marketing tools that an author can have because they're going to be with you for you know, a lot longer than your book launch, for your next book launch, and whenever you have a promotion going on. And then you want to reward them a little bit too, right? Give them a little sneak peek, give them something that not everybody else is going to have. And then number three, think of these creative out-of-the-box marketing ideas. If you happen to hear a news story that in any way relates to your book, you know, jump on that, reach out to that um, media person. And if you have, if you're working with an independent publisher like me, you know, get your publisher involved because a lot of times it might have a little more pull to, to have the publisher reach out than the, than the author. Your publisher should be willing to do that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, publishers do like, you know, you've been in the business a while, so you, you have certain connections that the author may not. So um, I guess you encourage them to reach out to suggest things, say, hey, I have an idea for this. And then. Oh, absolutely. I look at my relationship with my author as a real partnership. You know, it's sure there are some things that I may know that they don't know just because they don't do that kind of that part of the business. But I always want my authors to to be able to come to me with suggestions and ideas, and and then we can work on it together. I I can't tell you how much I appreciate um, just you giving advice on this, and you do have that book planner. So again, everyone, it's uh, Motina M O T I N A Books with an S dot com, and you can download that. Um, you also have some uh, releases coming out, so I wanted to mention those. Uh, Descent into, now tell, help me pronounce this <laughs> word. I know, I know I'm gonna get it wrong, so just do it. What's the name of the book? Descent into Othoa. And Otho, okay. Yes. Uh, it's by Gordon Bonnet. Um, it'll be coming out October 19th, correct? That's right. It's okay. a it's a kind of a scary horror sci-fi kind of book uh, that's us little in uh, the vein of H.P. Lovecraft, and it's a really great, creepy book, just right in time for Halloween. I'm excited about that one. Mm, that's some smart marketing there. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, so it, it also, if anybody wants to learn more about IBPA, you can visit ibpa-online.org. Also, make sure to subscribe to this podcast. Uh, we have new episodes the last Thursday of every month. Uh, Diane, uh, you're, you're just, I really appreciate it. And again, I love the concept of publishers really helping their authors set them up for success. Um, as an author publisher myself, but as someone who just writes, if I were to go to a publisher, you know, I, I would want to have it be like you said, like a partnership mm -hmm. uh, to feel like they cared enough to want to help like guide me because uh, it can be scary and you, you think... I don't. I know how to write, but I don't know necessarily how to sell things. So right. uh, I love that you help them with that process, uh, and then they can go off and you know succeed. And it, it, it's beneficial to both, but um, it just means the world to someone who's an author um, that they feel like they're being um, looked after. Well, thanks. I appreciate your saying that, and I'm more than happy to help authors. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. And uh, again, check out the episodes last Thursday of every month. We appreciate it. And thank you again, Diane. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.